What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. So I have my final review video on the Tamayo 135th scale Sherman military tank. And this is the Korean War version, uh, which means it has the red face and all this fun stuff. So I didn't do any updates on this because I know a lot of you on my channel don't really care about military tanks. When I do them, I don't think it's kind of waste. I, I don't think it's worth my time to, to do a video and then post it and stuff so but the reason why I did the tanks because Splash Paints contacted me and asked me if I could do a how-to video on how to spray them so I figured so yeah absolutely because you know me and him are kind of a partnership so I um, did a how-to video if you have not seen that video it's right there on your corner of your screen or I'll put it in the description or in the pinned comment down below uh, check it out it's actually a pretty good video and um, so yes this is Splash Paint's brand new lineup his military color he just brought out the military colors this month I think beginning this month and it, I gotta say he did a banger job I mean his colors turned out amazing and this is his out of draft uh, the, you know the dark green so I'll show you what we did to mine so of course the out of draft is his brand new color for military colors and it, it, the thing covered super well i mean it this is only one and a half coats of uh, paint right here and it's you know that's it, how well it covered uh the red is actually a tamaya red um flat flat red acrylic paint so um, i was going to use one of splash paints red but it was a bit too poppy and i didn't really want it that poppy so i just that's why i just used a the Tamaya Red, so, but all right now it's the, the thing turned out amazing. Um, I did use all the decals, well most of them, the stars and this guy and obviously the monster. You don't, you do have the choice. You don't, you don't have to do the monster face. You don't want to, but I thought it was pretty cool. I kind of wanted to do it with the monster face, so that's why I did it. And the decals, they were nice, but the the mouth and yeah, maybe the mouth. It, it did take some time because it has to go over some grooves and stuff on the uh, body and stuff but I'll uh, just take a time with the decals and they definitely do sh they definitely do form it's very nicely and but I now it's, and I, the, the thing turned out amazing and then you know after decals and I shot the whole thing with matte clear um, just you know to protect, to protect the decals so you don't come off ever again and you know keep the paint sealed in so uh, I've, I did weather the thing quite a bit I do want to make this thing, uh, you know, it's actually driving in the war, you know, in Korean War, uh, which was 1950 and 1950 through 1953, I think. I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, it's an older, well, really old tank. But um, I did look up some pictures. Korean War was not a clean war. It was pretty muddy. I mean, pretty much a lot of pictures I saw with the tanks, they were in mud or in submerged mud. They were falling off cliffs. I mean, Korean, it was it was a pretty messy war. I mean, it was it was it was pretty muddy. So um, the tracks I did in MIG or Mega Mud, I use his wet mud right here, and then I use the dark earth pigment to you know give that you know dryness and crunchiness and stuff it has in there. So that's what we did in there, and then. I mean, the mud actually turned out pretty good, and I'm really glad how I'm really happy how it turned out. It looks pretty real. The extra spare tracks up here, I rusted them out because a lot of these tracks that are spares on tanks, they 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 wrap, they you know they rust away. I mean, they're just sitting there, just collecting rain and dust and mud sometimes, and then they just they just rot out. That's you know that's typical, but those those I rust with the MIG um, light rust. Here we go. White rust wash. And then I use his use their light rust pigment and then a few other things, a few colors. I mixed like a red and a brown and like a cor and um, a clear orange, you know, give it a good effect. So the rust, I'm actually really happy how that turned out, the extra tracks. And then the whole thing, I just gave a whole thing. A coating or like a brush with the uh, pigment of the uh, light dust or light earthed, light yeah light earth, um, make, you know made it look like it's driving and just 
getting dust and getting mud. You know, this is like dried up mud on the front. That's why I did the front extra muddy. Like it's dried up and then you know, I, I, it really looks cool and it looks absolutely incredible. And weathering is actually, for me, it's actually kind of fun part for, for tanks because tanks, when I do a tank, um, I don't, I never do them clean. I mean, tanks are never really clean. Even when they build them, they're pretty dirty. Uh, well, not dirty, but they're kind of dusty and, you know, they're, they're not the cleanest things. And I think if you do like a showroom tank, then that would be pretty cool for museums. That's the only time I think tanks are halfway decent clean is when they're in a sitting in a museum. But no matter what, if they're in the... Uh, Whatever, if they're just sitting in the um, military base, they're still dirty. They, they don't really wash them all that well. Um, but like I said, this one I want to look like it's actually in the war. And, you know, it's actually pretty cool. Uh, so the gun on top is 50 cal. I did in the black and I did put on like a dust wash. Um, I can find it. It's like a light. Yeah, here we go. Light dust. So it gives it like, that like, dusty look. It's pretty cool. So I did that flat black and then the um, the ammo boxes, also down here are spares. I did them in like a lighter green than the actual tank is from Tamaya. Also it does seem with jerry cans. So pretty cool. And this this is actually a very good detail. The uh, you can actually see the um, the bullet shells in the the you know the magazine going into the gun and I painted those titanium gold. And then black wash them and it's actually pretty good detail. Tamaya did a, a banger job on this. Then you have your extra tools, shovels, your switch hammer when they have the hammer on the extra tracks if one of them breaks, you know. And it, I mean, overall, this tank turned out amazing. It was actually a very fun build. Very long process. I mean, the world wheels, it did take some time to sand them down, but tanks are fun because you basically just build it all at, at once, use the Tamaya extra extra fence cement, just build it all and then you just paint it all in one, one unit, which is pretty cool and um, it's it's definitely definitely very fun. And weathering, for me, that is the fun part. And you know, sometimes you, you do have to practice. I mean, this is my third tank. I did the fourth one, which you'll see a video on that one shortly, but this is my third tank I've ever built and um, it definitely turned out way better than I thought and it looks really cool. And also this kit also has a rope here, pretty cool. And then you attach it with the ends and then, yeah, amazing. Tamaya has done, done an outstanding job with this kit. I've been wanting to do this kit for quite some time now. Ever since um, Andy, Hobby, Hobby, Andy Hobby Headquarters did a video on it like, about a few years ago. I thought it was pretty freaking cool. I never got one and I finally got one and then perfect moment to do one because Splash Paints asked me if I could do a how-to video on his paints, his new military colors and it's a perfect time to do the um, military colors and or you know the tanks that I have. So very cool. And then with this tank, that's it for this tank and that's basically all I did to it. Let's put this off to the side. And let's bring out the bonus kit this kit came with, which was the Jeep. Let's zoom in. This is a Russian Jeep that came in with this Sherman uh, tank kit. It's a bonus kit that Tamaya threw in. Um, I heard this kit was actually an older Tamaya kit. I think Tamaya released it by itself years, years ago. And I don't think Tamaya's making it anymore, but they Obviously still are there just throwing it in, in this kit instead. And it's actually pretty cool. And I can tell it was old because it wasn't really going together. I mean, it went together pretty good, but there were some kind of body lines that wouldn't line up too good. You do have to fiddle it a little bit, but I can definitely tell this is an older, much older mold from Tamaya. But I didn't care about fitment because I made it look like it was on fire. This is the first time ever I have done a fire vehicle. I wanted to give it a try. I thought I seen some pictures or some videos, or not videos, but I did see some actual models like right on fire at a few model shows. I think I think Acme had one. One guy had like a like a burnt Mustang. I thought it was pretty cool. So I figured with this, this is perfect because the Russians, they were actually enemies. 
in the Korean War. Um, so obviously they're enemies now with Ukraine, but I'm not gonna get into that. But there were enemies also in the Korean, and I f I want to do a Russian Jeep. This Russian Jeep maybe it was burnt and shot up and you know basically just blown to shit. <laughs> so um, so I did the weathering in the front. This is actually pretty cool. So all the dents. So basically put the whole Jeep together, the side panels and the floor and the back it was it was in multi pieces so you have assembled it, the jeep it wasn't molded like a normal car kit you do have to assemble the side pieces and stuff so i assembled the whole jeep and then i got a blowtorch a mini blowtorch and you know heat up some parts and dented them cut some holes and stuff and melted like the headlights the parts that would melt through the fire because these car fires they get significantly hot and they do melt the cars like the headlight buckets so i melted those and you know, put the, I put dents all over it, right? They're just driving like crazy, and they dented the vehicle, like the, the fender flares. I put a big dent on a tailgate, where you want to cut back here. So, but I painted the I painted the Jeep in splash paints of draft, same as the Jeep. But I didn't do a black base coat. I just did primer and then just the color, or white. I did a primer, then white, and then I did the. Um, color because I wanted the color not as dark uh, because Russian Jeeps were actually a bit lighter so but then I did obviously after that I went ahead and did black on the front painted I used the Tamaya flat black acrylic paint and just painted the black very misty mist over here and then pretty heavy over here where the you know the, the fire was and then I used to, to my natal brown and brown up the spots that I wanted to rust on the front. And then, of course, we used the pigments. I used the light rust wash from MIG again and their light rust pigment. Along with some darker rust spots, such as up here, I went ahead and used AK Rust Streak, which is actually a darker uh, rust just you know darker from the, from the MIG then the windshield I cracked and put some bolt holes in there and then the front windshield I put a hole in it um, there's two ways that could happen if the Russian guy was driving and he was shooting a pistol while driving through the windshield that's one way it busted through or obviously the enemies were going to shoot to kill the driver um, so um, pretty cool so you no matter what there's a hole there um, then I dirty up the interior like mud and stuff like the Russians are getting in and out You know, it's obviously like I said, it's a dirty war. They're trampling through mud and you know, it's gonna be muddy inside But I'm actually really happy how this turned out um, my very first burnt burnt car and <laughs> It turned out way better than I thought and of course I, I fattened the, the back the front the front tires where the heat got to it and just popped them and this kit also has a spare but I actually use that spare for a practice, how to flatten tires. I just heat up a bullet torch and just push it against my desk. Um, so that's my practice, but I left it off because you know I don't want the flat tire on there. And also I've actually put the spare wheel on the front, right? They popped the tire, the original tire, and then they used the spare. Then they just left the other tire stranded somewhere. So that's my uh, little story on that. So. This one has this is a spare because of it, because it doesn't have the little thing in, in the center like this one has it right there and this one doesn't so this is a spare but obviously it's flat again <laughs> so it's like on fire but other than that guys this is this is a sherman kit from tamaya the queen of war and this is the little jeep and the thing turned out amazing i love how it turned out and it turned out way better than i thought it would so, let's go ahead and zoom you guys back out, not that far. Then bring the tank back out, and then we'll get the Jeep right there. Perfect. And then there's the kit, guys. My camera is a little weird. Uh, there we go. So, there's the kit. Those are the two kits, or the main one is the tank that came in this kit, and then the Jeep was a bonus kit. And this is going to make a very cool display. But other than that, guys, that's it. That's all I did for this one. 
it turned out way better than I thought, and it was a, it was definitely a fun, very fun build. I really enjoyed it. But other than that, guys, let me know what you think, and um, I'm gonna have another video on another tank that I just built later today, or if not tomorrow. But other than that, guys, take care, and until my next video, I'll catch you guys next time. Take it easy.